We have made church great again for people who are giving up on church. There is actually a simplicity in Christ Jesus. You don't come to God based on what he will do or based on what he is doing. You come to God based on what Christ has done. And the way to do that is by believing and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Let me also welcome our online audience joining this service from all over the world. We have viewers from all over. Okay, please celebrate our online audience. All right, so this morning, I want to speak a little bit as a kind of continuity from what I was sharing on last week. I call it acquitted and discharged. The word acquitted is a word used in the law courts when you have been set free from the wrong that you obviously committed, then the judge can acquit you. When you have been acquitted, you can now be discharged. And that is what Jesus told the woman that was caught in adultery. Jesus practically told her, you have been acquitted and you have been discharged. Go and sin no more. Help me tell your neighbor, say go and sin no more. You have been acquitted and you have been discharged. Praise God forevermore. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians that he that is in Christ is a what? New creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Do you have a past? Yes. But old things have passed away. The past is past. I am saying this because once you have believed in Jesus, especially when you are coming from somewhere, one of the most potent weapons the enemy targets at you is what we call guilt. The enemy reminds you of everything you did wrong before you became a believer. And as a matter of fact, that mindset can affect your Christian walk. So you hear people saying, I know the reason why I have not had a child now in marriage is because I had series of abortion when I was single. And so the enemy is using their past experiences to fire guilt at them. Guilt and doubt are the two potent tools of the enemy. And the truth of the matter is the only reason why you will have guilt and doubt is because you still believe that your past is still in effectiveness. But he that is in Christ is a new creation. He is new as newness can be. We are there old things before you came to God. Yes, but old things have what? Talk to me. Passed away. All things have passed away. The person who did what you did no longer exists. He that is in Christ is a new creation. The person that had the series of abortion no longer exists. So that when you come to God, Satan does not bring back those memories. And then it affects your confidence in the presence of God. And then your body begins to respond to the mindset that is already functional in you. You are a new creation. So have you believed in Jesus? Yes. If you have believed in Jesus, you are a new creation. Old things have what? Talk to me. Passed away. You must believe that. If you believe that today, my job is done. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. The meaning of the word Satan is accuser. That is the literal meaning of the word Satan. So what he does is that he always comes to accuse God's children. 
and we give him a lot of attention. When I should be thinking, you know what, to my master, I sinned. If I do something wrong, I did not commit sin against the devil. If I do something wrong, I committed the sin against God. And scripture says to his master, he rises or falls. So when the devil comes to whisper to me, how can you be preaching? Do you remember what you did yesterday? I tell the devil, it's a family matter. You are not part of the equation. I did not sin against you. I sinned against my father. But we'll settle it indoors. Praise God. Romans 5 verse 1. Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, there is a biblical word called justification. The word justification literally means just as if I never sinned. Being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God. And one of the signs you will use in knowing that you are still consumed with doubts and guilt of past experiences is that you will lack peace. You will not have confidence to come to God. You will lack peace. But when you have believed in Jesus, you got justified by what? Faith. Now, by faith means you have to believe that you have been justified. Every saint has a past. And so, you must come to God boldly. Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, Therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. You don't approach God beggarly because you think you are, not, you are not supposed to come into his presence, being consumed by who you were. You approach the throne of grace boldly. The only way to assess grace is by boldness. And you will have that boldness when you have believed that you have been justified by faith. Am I teaching this morning? Now, this must enter you. Every time you judge somebody, you don't believe this. And every time you judge yourself, you don't believe this. Because we pastor a church of young people. And we will not be ignorant of what people must have been in their past. But if they are born again, they are new creations and will treat them as such. Are you in church this morning? So, you obtain the, you, you come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy. That's why you don't come to God and you say, I am a wretched sinner saved by grace. No, that's not boldness. You are either a wretched sinner or you have been saved by grace. You can't be both. When you have been saved by grace, focus on the grace of Christ Jesus that has saved you. Are you a sinner? No. Now, let me say this. A Christian is not somebody who does not commit sin. A Christian is not somebody who does not do anything wrong. That you committed sin does not make you a sinner. Rather, it is because you are a sinner, that is why you will commit sin. Sin is more of a nature, is in the DNA. And what Jesus came to do was to destroy the works of the devil. When you have believed in Jesus, that nature of sin has been taken away. He has given you the gift of righteousness. But do you still do wrong things? Yes, because now you are learning how to live righteous as he has made you. Meaning that you are not supposed to score yourself based on the wrong you did yesterday, even though, and this is what happens. That is why in most traditional settings, 
Every Sunday they have an altar call for people to come and get born again. The same people run out every Sunday. And then they give their life to Christ, in quotes. Perhaps they snatch back the life on Monday and begin the same cycle again. Then go for confession on a sad Sunday. The point we are making is that when you get born again, you cannot... See, you get born again once. When you make mistakes, you repent. And that is why as Christians, you will now give yourself to the word of God and renew your mind, meaning you will start learning how you are supposed to live the life you have been called into. But it does not mean that you will judge yourself by reasons of your shortcomings. Let me work on this more. When Jesus died on the cross, none of us here was born then. All of us here, we are living in the future of Jesus' death. Are you with me? Let me say that again. When Jesus died, we were not born in this generation. We all are living in the future of Jesus' death. So, if you believe that the death of Jesus Christ washed away the sins you committed before you got born again, it therefore means that that same blood also washed away the sins you will commit even after you got born again because both your future, your present, and your past are all in the future of Jesus on the cross. I didn't teach that well, did I? You didn't get the point. I'm a few over there. Um, the point is that God did not just forgive that sin you did that last time. God forgave the sins of your past, the sins of your present, the sins of your future. There is nobody more strategic than God. God knows that, you know, this death of my son on the cross, if it is just for the sin that they have committed before they got born again, I will still lose them if they were to do anything wrong afterwards. So God made provision such that Jesus' death went into the past, went into the future, and even came effective in the present. Okay, let me ask you. Abraham, Isaac, um, Jacob, Noah, David, all of the men you read about in the Old Testament, were they born before or after the death of Jesus? Before, right? Now, remember that no man can come to God except by Jesus Christ. And all of these people were born before even the birth of Jesus. It, it therefore means that when Jesus died on the cross, his sacrificial work went into the past to save the likes of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David. If his sacrificial work could go back into the past to save the saints of the Old Testament, then you could be sure his sacrificial work went into the future to save my unborn children. Do you believe this? Yeah. Scripture says in Romans 8 verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in what? Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the word spirit. If anybody should condemn anybody, it should be Jesus. And if Jesus does not, nobody has the right. There is therefore now no condemnation. Don't let any man condemn you. 
Like Pastor Platt once said, sinners calling out other sinners for sinning differently. So someone gets pregnant out of wedlock and, you know, everybody calls out the person and condemns the person. All right? You know, in those traditional settings, the elderly people would, would make sure they persecute you on behalf of God, they think. But same people probably have grandchildren in heaven. If you know what I mean. How did you know? <laughs> so, they condemn the one who we have seen, all right, out of wedlock, God pregnant. But who scores the card of the ones we did not know? You understand? You are not an assistant Holy Ghost. Listen, they told us that when we get to heaven, there will be a video we will watch. You know, it's a long queue. When it gets to your son, God will start playing from your birth to your death, everything you did wrong. Okay, you would see it and wish you never did it. There is nothing like that. When we get to heaven and it gets to your son, when they put on the video <laughs> to play your life story, you will see file not found. Do you know why? Because God is love. And 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says, love keeps no record of evil. So it means that God keeps no record of evil. God is not looking out from heaven, trying to catch you every time you do wrong. Like um, traffic people. Okay? Now hide and wait. Just, be, you know... God is not looking at, you know, it's what you are looking for, you will find. God is not looking at what you did wrong. As a matter of fact, God cannot see your wrong. Because God uses lenses. The lens he uses is the blood of Jesus. So when he's looking at you through the lens of Jesus' blood, you are as white as snow. Because he's seeing you through the quality of the blood that was shed for you. Praise God. Psalm 130, verse 3. Psalm 130, verse 3. Okay, sorry. Oh, wow. Message Bible doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Beautiful. Psalm 130 now. If thou, O Lord, shouldest mark iniquity, who shall what? A New Testament scripture. Romans 3, verse 23, the Bible says some people have sinned. Show me. Let's read. For only members have sinned, not pastors. Or your, I don't say it now, your, your daddy in the Lord. Okay? You know, there are some people you cannot just imagine that they ever sinned. They, the very air they breathe is holy. Let the word of God be true and let every other sin be a lie. It says that for what? And come short of the word. Now, that is not supposed to depress you. Look at the next verse. Let me see what is there. Because all have sinned, now what happened? Being justified. How much did you pay for it? So all have sinned. And so God justified us how? Freely by his grace. Come on now. Through the redemption that is in who? That word redemption means to buy back. 
It means that Jesus, God, bought us back. The amount he paid is the blood of Jesus. And that's what we are worth. You understand? He, he, we see, the good men of the Old Testament, their good works were not enough to save them. Did you know that even the likes of Abraham, David, just all of the good men of the Old Testament, when they died, they went to hell. But hell had compartments. So there was a part of hell that was for torture. And there was a part of hell that was called Abraham's bosom. Do you know the story of um, the rich man? And Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. Did you realize that, um, what was his name? The rich man lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham. No, and saw Lazarus, a better preacher, charity. And saw Lazarus in where? Abraham's bosom. Now, does it mean Abraham's bosom was in heaven? Because if that is the case, what you are saying is that people in hell... Can see people in heaven. I mean, if I were to be in hell, I'm seeing you enjoying in heaven. I will scale the fence. I can't be here permanently dying and you are just there enjoying. One day something will go wrong. Prison break. <laughs> so the point is, even that Abraham's bosom was in hell. All the good people of the Old Testament went to hell because Jesus had not yet been born. Nobody can assess heaven without the blood of Jesus. Are you seeing? And this was why when Jesus died and said it is finished, it didn't mean his work was finished. As when he said it is finished, he meant the law was finished. At that point, the Bible says he went to hell and preached to the souls in prison. So he went to hell and administer his blood to save them and all of them that believe. Scripture said he led captivity captive. Meaning they were all formerly captives of the old order because they were in hell. Now, having believed him in hell, he, he, he led captivity captive, that's efficient, and he made a public show of the devil. Because the Bible says, having spoiled principalities and power, he made a public show of them. That, that movie happened in hell. So Jesus did not forget those who have died before him. Because those who were here before Jesus was born, they got saved in the sense that they kept looking forward to a Messiah that will be born who will save them. We now, who have been born after Jesus has died, we get saved in the sense that we keep looking back to so the guy who hung on the cross. So that cross is where we all meet. Those in the old order look forward to him. Those in our own order look backward to him. So either ways, it is by his own work on the cross that we are saved. It is not by our good works. Praise God. Yes. He led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Okay, this was where he was ascending. So he went to hell. You will see that in 1 Peter 3.19. Either 1 Peter or 2 Peter 3.19. If you can find it for me. Yes. By which also. So if you read the preceding verses, thank you. You will see who he was talking about Jesus. He says that he also went and preached unto the spirits in hell. That's, that's prison, you know? You can't imprison a spirit, so that's telling you something. Are you with me? So the point I'm making is that even those you admire how good they are, their good works was not good enough to save them. It is still the blood of Jesus. When we get to heaven, you won't be there because, because you, you did good or you never had any issue with anybody or you never made any mistake. No. As a matter of fact, I tell people there is something common to everybody in heaven and everybody in hell. What is common to all of them is that they all sinned. 
because scripture says all have what sinned. Whether you made heaven or you made hell, all have sinned. And this is why sin is no longer the reason why anybody should go to hell, because all have sinned. So for you to go to hell, it means you deliberately reject the sacrificial work of Jesus. And for you to go to heaven, it means you deliberately accept and believe, are you seeing this? The sacrificial work of Jesus. So sin is the equalizer. All have sinned. God will not send you to hell because you sinned. Those in heaven also sinned. God will not even send anybody to hell. It is you that send yourself to hell by refusing to believe. Hell is not a punishment. God does not punish anybody anymore. Hell is a consequence of your willful decision not to accept what Jesus has done. God is no longer angry with you. It does not, you know, I am talking this morning to people who have a past. If you have a past, this message is for you. The person sitting by your side might be so sanctimonious, don't mind them. Okay? At least, we don't know their story. You understand? I am wearing white does not mean, okay, I'm just pure and holy. Okay? There is something all of us should reach out for. It is the blood of Jesus who saves. But if you don't believe in that, that is when you now have problems. But if you have believed in that, your past is past. God will not keep any record. Man may keep record, but God will not. And God will not use that against you. Praise the Lord. Show me James 4, verse 11. James 4, verse 11. Speak not, and this is an advice to church people. You understand? Because church, church, you know, not, not this church show. When I mean church people, I don't mean, you understand? This is one of the most cleanest churches I've seen in my life. Okay? Uh -huh. When I mean church, uh, you didn't say that, I don't believe. Okay. <laughs> Say, speak not evil one of another brethren. One of another brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Twelve. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Help me ask your neighbor. Say, who art thou that judgest another? You don't have the rights. God did not give anybody that responsibility. So you come to church and you lift up holy hands and you say, ah, I know that person singing. I saw that person at the club yesterday. I did not go. I was just passing by. Okay. And, and I saw, you know, who are thou that was judgest another? What you don't know is that Satan has distracted you from your worship. You understand? What you don't know is that you are looking onto a man when you should be focusing on what? Christ. No man is your standard. And this is what happens. This is why when people hear that a particular great man of God made a mistake or fell, it is so extraordinary. They can't believe it. Even if the person admits, people with, on his behalf say, you didn't do it, Pastor, I know you. <laughs> I've not seen that before. Even the pastor will admit to his inner circle, I made a mistake, but some people will never believe. Pastor, is not you. Don't, they are framing you up. And most of the stories you hear, okay, most of the stories you hear, there, there is a truth in all of them. Let me not make you feel bad in most of them. Have you, why is it that nobody has ever accused a, a, a David Oyedeko or an Adeboye 
of infidelity. Why is it that nobody can use that point against them? They can only accuse them of enriching themselves. But there are some pastors that whenever there is an issue, it always relates them and sexuality and all of that. The point is that many of the time they, they did it. They were wrong. But you see, their members will not accept. You need to be sure where your faith is in. If you believe in your pastor, you will not be saved. You must believe in Jesus. You understand? Your pastor is also a Christian. So if you hear that the person did something wrong, and you even say, in short, I'm not going to church anymore, that's how they all are. It means you never got saved. All the while, your faith was in your geo. And so when he fell, you followed. But if you keep looking unto Jesus as the author and finisher of your faith, you will realize that he is the standard. No man is. So you'll focus on Christ. Praise God. If I don't get so much clapping today, I can understand. I hope you're not thinking of your past. Now, the aim of this is such that you will be thinking of the presence that God has given you and the glorious future that you have. Praise God. Hallelujah. One day in an argument, I challenged somebody. The person said, and he was, you know, most of the time, those who know what to say are, are too quiet. So you will see ignorant people speaking so confidently and swaying others. So the guy kept saying, if God does not destroy Nigeria, God will apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was making sense. I didn't want to talk until other people started believing. Because, I mean, it looks like we did worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Actually, we have. Okay? Well, they have. And I know that. And I know follow. So he said, if, if God does not destroy Sodom and uh, Nigeria, God will apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah, blah, blah, blah. Now, that's, that's, that just shows that the person is, is doctrinally ignorant. Sodom and Gomorrah existed before the birth of Jesus. You understand? All of those who were destroyed then were parts of those who Jesus preached to in hell. So who told you that they are not saved? If God destroyed Nigeria, God will apologize to Jesus because Jesus shed his blood for Nigerians. Do you get the point? So you are too conscious of the evil that is happening. But we are getting distracted for, from the finished work of Christ. There is something in, 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 in um, is it um, civil law, criminal law now, they call it the law of double jeopardy. Okay? You cannot sentence somebody for the same offense the second time. Meaning, if my son does something wrong, and I give myself over, and I serve seven years in prison, on behalf of my son who erred, when I come out, you will not sentence my son again when I have gone on his behalf. Are you with me? God cannot punish you again for what he has punished Jesus for. That's the point. Okay? So don't let Satan tell you that the reason why this and this is happening to you is because of the bad things you did before. If you have believed in Jesus, it is not God that is punishing you. You understand? If you have not gotten pregnant, it is not because of the wrong thing you did. As long as you are a Christian, God is not punishing you. On the cross, God exhausted all of his anger on Jesus Christ. Jesus did not only die for our sin, he died as our sin. On the cross, he was a sinner. He was so sinful on that cross that God could not behold him. God turned his back away from him. It was at that point he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? On record, there was no time that Jesus ever called God, God. He always called God, Father. That was why they were going to stone him because they haven't heard that before. But on the cross, God became God like a strict God to him because there was now a disconnection. 
Why? Because on the cross, he carried the sins of the world, not just the sins of Christians, the sins of the world, born and unborn, dead or alive. He carried the sins of the world, and so God punished him for it. If God has punished him for it, God will no longer punish you for it. The only problem now is that you are punishing yourself for it. And so it's looking like it is affecting you. Are you with me? Let me show you something about Paul. You know, I like Paul. Paul is my mentor. (laughs) Paul said in Acts 20 verse 26... I don't know, this, this guy, Paul, I, nobody understood the grace of God like Paul. Can you imagine what Paul is saying? Paul said, all of you will bear me record this day that I am pure, I am free from the blood of all men. Are you not shocked? I'm shocked that you are not shocked. This was the same guy who held the cloths of the people who stoned Stephen. So death. This was the same guy when he was Saul, he said he would not eat or drink until all Jews were dead. Are you seeing? He kept killing the Jews that God had to break protocol and evangelize to him by himself. God doesn't preach. It's men who preach. But God had to by himself come and say, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? As in, God was literally saying, why did they do me like this? <laughs> do you get? He, he, he was that bad. Okay? He massacred Christians. But look at him saying, I am pure from the blood of all men. Something must have happened to his consciousness. He has now developed, say, no wonder he was the one that wrote, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The person writing this believes so deeply that the person that killed those Christians is dead. This one is brand new, has not done anything wrong. You understand? That's how you must think. What if your heart is condemning you? 1 John 3 verse 20. If your heart condemns you, God is greater than our hearts. For if our hearts condemn... See, there is provision for all in scriptures. So, let's say you are still meditating on that because this is what the enemy is using. Okay? You think you are being emotional. You are not being emotional. You are just losing. When you want to preach, Satan tells you, see, 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 you, 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 now you won't preach. And he reminds you what, you know, I remember in secondary school, before we go and preach, we will first of all go and pray, God, forgive me my sin. Because you are so conscious of that you, you, you are a sinner. So when your friend asks you, ah, oh, you, 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 they preach, he says, ah, God knows, I got born again back five minutes ago. <laughs> You now make a defense for your salvation. You don't have to. It just shows where your consciousness lies. If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. It means if your mind is telling you that you, you are not qualified, you are wrong, you that's murdered people, you used to be an armed robber or a kidnapper or you're a fraud star, God is greater than your heart. You understand? This is not me talking. This is scriptures. God is greater than your heart. Because if you don't come out of guilt, you would never express the totality of the Christian life. Praise God. What I'm saying now is what would make some people to say, are you people now giving people the license to sin? No. No. This kind of message would even make you stay right. If somebody tells you your phone is water resistant, will you not go and throw the phone inside the well? (laughs) Say it's water resistant. Do you understand? Preaching the message of God's grace 
does not give people a license to continue to sin. It gives them the power to live above sin. Because now they realize that God is not holding that against them. And so they will start doing better by means of that understanding. You can never win people over by pointing their wrongs at them. This is why when you hear people on the streets preaching, you would think there were preachers everywhere. No, they are not preaching the message. Okay? When, you know, when you see them, or oh, it's in the market telling you, or oh, it's um, um, you that you are, you are doing this and that. Are you, I, 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 there is one man, he's my father in the Lord. He will say, <laughs> say, 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 fire will shave your bum bum. <laughs> You know that you know the guy. I mean? Oh, that man is my mentor. Okay, so <laughs> they, you you wear the red trouser. Okay, you will be born. I hope you know that's not preaching. No, you you should laugh when you hear that. That's that's comedy. It should make you happy. Okay, it's see when you talk about hell, you are not preaching the gospel. You understand? When you tell people about hell, you, you, maybe you are thinking that you can draw them to God by fear. No, no, no. What puts people to God is love. You understand? When you are talking about, about everything they have done wrong, you have not preached. Preaching is talking about everything Jesus has done right. So don't tell people who they were. Tell them who they can be by reason of what Christ has done. This is why the gospel is God is not angry with you. You, you know, just think about that. I remember once when we went to go and preach at Swing Road, we, we, we were preaching to some bus drivers, and we told them God is not angry with you. One said, boss, God invest for this, my guy. <laughs> okay. Now, if you tell somebody who is very much assured that he's a sinner, that God is not angry with you. What do you think will happen in the person's mind? If you tell the person you are a sinner, you will die, the person is already aware. He has made up his mind. He will die and die. <laughs> okay? But when you tell the person, God is not angry with you, that is what is called good news. And the gospel means good news. You mean with all of this I have done? You mean with all of what I have become? God is not angry with me, that gives you a, a platform to talk more. They will want to hear more. Are you seeing? But we have been preaching the law. Okay, tell them about this, about hell, about all of that. No, that's not our message. See, the gospel, the word gospel actually is, is beyond good news. That's what gospel means, news that is too good to be true. That word is used in classical Hebrew, okay? News that is too good to be true because you meet someone who is sure he's a chronic sinner and you say, God is not angry with you. God loves you. He doesn't think so. That is when preaching begins. When they believe that, that's faith in their hearts by which they have believed what you are saying and they want to hear more, is what will change them. It is the gospel that changes people. Romans 1.20 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what? Salvation. The gospel is powerful enough to change any person. So don't tell them who they are. Tell them the gospel. God is not angry with you. That's how people start changing. Praise God. Romans 8, 33 to 34, as we attempt to start closing this. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? So when someone has believed in God, who are you that will point an accusing finger at them? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. 34, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Meaning, that's the person who should have the rights. 
Ye rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, and make it intercession for us. So Jesus right now is at the right hand of God, making intercession. So Jesus is praying for me and you on behalf of whatever we can still do wrong while we are still in this flesh. Are you seeing? So we have him as our advocate. Meaning, if you were to hire a lawyer, Jesus is your lawyer. He is called the mediator between God and man. You understand? I read all of those tracts. They will tell you that just yesterday, God got angry and he wanted to end the world. And, and, and why he called the angel to blow the trumpet, Jesus now began to cry. And now, you know... People are trying to achieve something good through a wrong means. Do you get? In their mind now, they are doing God a favor. What they are doing now will help people to come to God. You are trying to achieve something good through a wrong means. It will cause us more problems. There is nothing like that. God, God does not have a mood swing. God has integrity. The character of God is known in his word. Praise God. God is sovereign. He does what he will do. And Jesus is the mediator between God and what? Man. Zechariah 3 verse 1. Zechariah 3 from verse 1 to 4. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. All right, that's what Satan does. The Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Blah, blah, blah. Go to verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with a what? A filthy garment and stood before the angel. For, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. That's what God does. Satan is accusing people because of their filthy garments. God does not accuse them. God says, take away the filthy garments. He says, behold, I have caused thy iniquity to do what? Pass from thee. And I will clothe thee with what? Change of raiment. So when God sees people who are filthy, he changes their raiment. Satan is there to accuse them. That's why he's Satan. But God is not listening. God changes the agreement. So you don't accuse yourself. And you don't judge another, people, another person. Rather, pray for them. Pray for them. Okay? 1 Corinthians 2 verse 15. The Bible says, He that is spiritual judges all things, yet he, is, he himself is judged of no man. So no man has the right to judge you if you have believed in God. Praise God. Do you remember the woman who was caught in adultery? The Bible says that she was caught in the very act, meaning they caught her in adultery, and they brought her to Jesus. And nobody told us anything about the man she was caught with, because religion has a way of making some sins less sinful and some more sinful. So the man was, was okay, but the woman was adulterous. Are you seeing religion? So they brought her to Jesus. Now, if maybe me and you, we are Jesus, you will say, but madam, why did you do it? And you know, that sounds honest. Say, why did you do it? Why did you do it? Jesus did not interrogate her. There is no record that Jesus ever interrogated her for what she did. As a matter of fact, before Jesus told her, go and sin no more, he forgave her first. Jesus did not even look at her. Jesus looked at the people accusing her, and he told them, if you have not sinned, be the first to cast the stone. And they all began to live one by one. And Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, where are thy accusers? That, that picture tells you the, what Jesus came to do. Where are your accusers? She looked around and said, There are no more. He said, Has no one accused you? She said, No one, Lord. 
And he said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. He forgave her first. You have been acquitted and discharged. Go and sin no more. Now, did you know that it was that same woman that came with the alabaster box and poured fragrance on his feet and anointed him, which was prophetic to his burial? Meaning that, like Jesus said, she loves much because she has been forgiven much. Are you saying, if Jesus had accused her, okay, she would have been totally lost. She would live the rest of her life in condemnation. Now she had the boldness to oil his feet. She loves much because she has been what? Forgiven much. The Bible says, he that comes to me, Jesus talking, John 6, 37, I will in no wise do what? Cast away. Jesus does not tell people, go and clean up before you come. He tells them, come as you are. I will clean you up. Okay? He that comes to me, I will in no wise, there is no way I will cast the person out. Praise God. If you have been born again, you are a new creation. Okay? Forget, see, forget about it. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, Philippians 3, and looking forward. He said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You will do that by first words, forgetting. Okay? Let's assume while you were in school, you, you, your, your, your nude pictures went round on campus. Now, you have become born again five years after somebody is still threatening you. You know I still have those pictures. That was not you. You cannot keep on living in the shadow of that for the rest of your life. Don't ever let Satan tell you that the reason why you will not have children is because of that abortion you had. It's not true. It's not, there could be biological factors, but it is not God using anything against you. The person who did that does not exist. And any time Satan tells you about your past, you too remind Satan about his future. Tell Satan that you, you yourself, will be sent into the lake that burns with what? Fire and you explain the brimstone. Okay? Tell him his future. When he tells you your past, tell him his future. Jesus will conquer him at the end of time, finally. Put your hands together for Jesus. We have made church great again for people who are giving up on church. There is actually a simplicity in Christ Jesus. You don't come to God based on what he will do or based on what he is doing. You come to God based on what Christ has done. And the way to do that is by believing and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior.